Hi, this is part seven of our simple building uh, and Revit basics uh, tutorial. And what I want to do now is uh, add some foundations to the walls we've got. Um, so we'll be doing that on the the level zero plan. So I'm going to close the level one plan that's open. Find level zero's plan and. I want to select just the external perimeter wall. Uh, I realize some of these internal walls would have foundations as well, but we'll leave that for another time. So if you hover over a wall, tap tab, and I'm wanting to make sure I get the perimeter that you can see showing blue. Sometimes when you do that, you might end up with a slightly incorrect perimeter. You can see it there. You can see it's, it's actually sneaking into the middle of the building. So it's just a case of moving along a bit and trying a different position. So now I just click select once. So it's left mouse button just once. So I've got the walls and currently they don't go down very far. Let's have a look at the view. You see the the stopping above the edge of the slab. So let's push them into the ground by 900 millimeters. So we'll have a base offset of minus 900. Click apply. Okay, so they're going down now, and what I can do now is add some foundations to these. So if I go to structure and add foundation wall for foundations for walls, okay, I probably need to do this on the level zero plan again. So select multiple, that will make it quicker and do the same method of selection. So we hover, tap, tab, key. I've got the perimeter, select once. And when I finish, I should get a warning. Okay, it's saying that you can't see those foundations on this level. Yeah, that's that's okay, I understand that. They're below the, the slab. Okay, so it's just a warning. It's not something I need to address. Okay, have a look at the 3D and you see we've got our perimeter foundation there. Okay, I haven't got any site modeled here, so the door looks like it's hanging in midair, but that's actually ground level at that position. Okay, now I want to deal with the roof. Okay, so uh, let's keep the elevation open. We'll see what's happening there, but I'll swap my plan for the level two plan. So I'll go to my floor plans, level two. Okay, it's looking down onto the top of the walls of level one, so I've got something I can trace around to get a perimeter. Okay, so I go to architecture now, and let's have a look for a roof. Okay, and I want to sketch around the perimeter here create a boundary. So using the object snaps, I'll create a boundary. Little pink triangles appear and these are indicating that this this perimeter line is going to generate a pitched roof section. Okay, so I'm just letting it generate pitches all the way around. Okay, come back to the start. Okay. Now, if I if I just let it go at this position, then the roof will be kind of in line with the edge of the walls, and that will look fairly clumsy. So I'd like to offset this, and this is this has to be done pretty carefully. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what happens. So let's set the offset distance before we try and do it. Okay. So let's say there's an offset of 450 millimeters. Okay. Then I want to offset okay I'm hovering over a line and you can see that it's trying it's showing which side the offset will go to so the dash blue line is showing which side it'll go to so in the same way that we select multiple chains of things if you tap the tab key it's showing you that it's going to run around the whole building okay click once the offset gets done but now we've got two sets of 
perimeter lines for the for, the, for generating the roof. We'd end up with two roofs. So let's modify and let's delete the inside one. So hover over it, tap tab, click once with the left mouse button, and then you can delete. So that's going to create just one roof now. Okay, let's see what happens when the roof gets generated. I see that in the 3D view. If I click the tick now, very quickly throws together quite a complex roof. Because this is this is building to tapering, there's there's quite a lot of geometry going on here. This this is sloping in, in basically two directions, it's sloping down here as well. There's a slight fall on that. Otherwise it wouldn't work out. Okay, now let's let's have a wee look at if we edit the footprint here and we switched off if we uh, disable the the roof pitch on some of these lines so I click the line and it's letting me say you know which one's going to be sloping and which one's not um, so I can take the tick if I tick off here that line doesn't define a slope so it would generate a gable there now so let's just see what happens if I with that Okay, so you see what happens. We get a gable there. It does look quite, quite charming. It looks a wee bit less, less clumsy. Okay, turn around. You can see what's what's happening. So what we could do now is, uh, is tell the walls to go to meet the roof. Now I haven't got any st actual structure in there really. Uh, we'll make make the roof a little less steep. It's a wee bit steep at the moment. So. We've got the roof selected. It's using a 30 degree pitch everywhere. Now this can be controlled. You can have different pitches wherever you want. So let's say the pitch is generally 15 degrees. Okay, flattens out. Looks a bit simpler. Wouldn't need to be so heavy. And let's change the uh, the structure for this roof. So this is where we'd edit the type. I just want to make the roof look a bit thinner, actually. So edit type, edit the structure, and let's just thin down a couple of these layers just to make it look a bit more elegant. Okay, so let's say the insulation layer is only 100, which is nowhere near enough nowadays, and let's make the purlins a bit thinner as well, let's say 150. So probably a bit unrealistically thin, but uh, it's just for the, for the look. Okay, click apply, and okay. So we've got that a fair bit thinner now. Right, what I'd like to do here is make the roofs join to the underside of the, sorry, make the walls join to the underside of the roof. So if I hover over a wall, tap tab, and it's taking the wall inside there. So let's try a different location. There we go, that's better. It's not, take, not taking any internal walls. So I click on my walls and Using this icon here, I can attach the top to either up or down to a different objects. So I attach this to the top, and I want to attach the walls to this object. Okay, click in the white, and that is super quick. Okay, so when I look underneath the roof here, I'm getting my walls going up, meeting at the corners where they should do. Because it was a clean, it was a simple, similar offset all the way around. Okay, so it's nothing too fancy, but um, it's a useful exercise just to get you kind of for the feel of the way the, the software works. There's lots of nuances, there's lots of maybe structural things there that aren't quite, um, quite correct, but uh, it does give you a reasonably good feel for the way the software operates. Now, what we'll do now is just have a look at how you how you basically set up a, a, a drawing sheet. Okay, um, so the views we leave them basically at the scale that we're, we're we're wanting. Okay, so I'll leave that one at a scale of I'm going to change this to one to two hundred. This is a bizarre one, the three D. So okay, it, in a way it's kind of scaleless. These kind of axonometric isometric things don't really work to scale. So I'm just going to set that one to 1 to 200 so it's a bit smaller. 
OK, I've got my level 2 plan. I'm not going to print that one out just now, so I'm just going to close that one. OK, I will be printing this elevation, and 1 to 100, I'll keep that as it is. And it was the plans that were changed to 1 to 10, so they'll be massive if I printed a full plan at 1 to 10. It's ridiculously big. OK, so I'll change this to 1 to 100 as well. OK. Maybe a few dimensions here that we could get rid of, but I'll, I'll just leave them on. Okay, level 1 plan is at 1 to 100, that's okay. And I think the elevations that I'm interested in printing were both at 1 to 100. So we'll check the east one, and that's at 1 to 100 as well, so that's fine. Okay, I'll close that one, and we'll just leave the one open. And So now we want to, to create a sheet to work with. Okay, so we'll do this on the view ribbon, and I'm looking for the the sheet command. Okay, where are you? I'm maybe on the wrong one. No, there it is. New sheet. Okay, when with such a small cramped view for the uh, for the, for Camtasia for the screen capture, it's difficult to see what you you're working on. Okay, so I want a new sheet. Okay, and this is the one that comes with the software. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in one. I, I've used this and I've stripped it down a wee bit. So I'm gonna load my version, which is in on my desktop, in one of my teaching folders. So I've got Revit teaching example, and I've got an A1 landscape. Okay, so this started life as the the metric one here, and I just basically deleted some of the some of the bits. Uh, a bit of the clutter, give myself a bit more space to, to show things. Okay, so open that. And I want to use that one, so okay. Okay, so I've got a blank sheet of paper with a title box. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in on that, and I'm just going to give the, the drawing a new number. So let's. I'm just going to call this uh, Rev1. It sounds like revision one, doesn't it? That's probably not a good name. Um, let's call it Revit one. Went to lowercase there, sorry. Revit one. Okay, so I've given it a number. That's important. That it has a number. This stuff can follow. This can come from the the uh, be generated from from within the database, but we need a number, and so this will populate then onto where the uh, the uh, the views are taken. So it's dead easy to set up a sheet. You just go to the plan you're interested in, and we basically drag the viewport onto the piece of paper. Okay, so that viewport is going to fit there nicely. And I'll take the level one plan and drop that on. And can you see it automatically lines up? There's a there's a little snap there for lining up. Dead easy. This is so much easier to do than in AutoCAD, getting viewports to line up. Okay, I'm not worried about ceiling plans. I'll maybe have those on a different sheet. Um, elevations now. So let's take the east elevation and drop that on. Okay, I'll take the south elevation as well and drop that on. And what I'd like to do is have a section. I haven't generated a section. So let's go back to the uh, level zero plan. And let's add a section line to the drawing. So if I go up here, you can see the section tool is on the view ribbon. OK, it's asking me to save the project again. Just cancel that just now. And what I'll do is I'll take a section through the upper part of the stair. Oh no, I'll take it through this part so that we, we can see the stair in the distance as well. Okay. Oh, I, yeah, I'll take it here. Okay, so I click and drag, and this is where the section will be located. Okay, click once, automatically. That's the, the scope of the section. So if I want, if I don't want to see the back wall in my section, I bring this down so it crops it or uh, limits its view to that distance, but I'd like to see the windows in the distance. Okay, 
So we're cutting through some fairly interesting bits, and that's usually where you should take a section, through the interesting bits. Okay, now that hasn't got a number or a name. Okay, it's all dashes and dots, doesn't know where it is. Notice these, though, have started to fill in. Because I've, I'm showing the elevation on Revit Sheet 1, and it's, it's drawing number 4 on Revit 1. Okay, if you see this, that's the south elevation, it's drawing number four on Revit 1. So the, auto the information populates automatically. Okay, so we've got a section now that we can take from the project browser. Okay, grab section one, drag it onto the sheet. Uh, I hadn't actually noted what, what scale it was, but luckily it's it's kind of come in at 1 to 100 so things are a bit busy there what I could do with is a bit of space here so let's move this up I'm just using my cursor keys for that just to get a bit of daylight between the two um, it's possibly the grid lines that are to the blame here so what I should do is maybe go into the south elevation and bring this grid line down okay doesn't need to be as high as it is there and likewise doesn't need to be high there any change you make in the viewport is automatically showing on each view. So the section line, the section markers there, and the grid lines are all changing. Have a look at the east elevation, and these grid lines. These grid lines are too high as well. Let's pull them down a bit. Save us a bit of roof space. Save us a bit of space on the drawing. Similarly here, take those up a tiny bit. And close the viewport but the drawing has changed so this is all live it's all live to the view so I can now give things a bit more space okay I've got space now for my section uh, this should really line up here so let's just see if we can do that I'm looking for a for a lining up doesn't seem to want to do it okay I'll maybe just have to give up on that one just now. Um, it's possibly because it's a section and not an elevation. If it was two elevations, it might be okay. Ah, there was something there. I did notice. Yeah, I think we're in line now. Okay, and down here, I'll line up at the bottom. Okay, so they're sitting kind of comfortably now. A bit of space between them. I've got a small amount of space left on the sheet there. Let's have a 3D view in there. Remember, I changed this to 1 to 200 so it wouldn't be too big. Okay, that was on purpose. So there's a bit of space for the 3D view. And it can sit happily there. And we could change that, we could have it displayed in a different manner. So at the moment, the shading type, the visual style is shaded with edges. And if I change it to realistic, then it will change in here as well. It takes a bit of time to, to work that out, but both views and now showing realistic um, hidden line would be quicker let's leave it on hidden line I quite like that okay look how blindingly quick it is to set up a sheet and you'll notice that this the information is filling in we're not showing elevation west or north so they don't have a name but these do Revit 1 the section line has got its information. It's so well coordinated, uh, blindingly easy. Okay, and then just as you would print normally, you can exp you can print that to a PDF or export it to whatever file types. You know, it is a the actual drawing. Um, so easy to to, to set up. Okay, I think that's hopefully whetted your appetite and you'll start taking the this Revit a bit further. And thanks for your attention.